This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and I'm in my happy place right now. I actually do like it when products are good. And this is the ASUS ProArt PX13. There's also a 16-inch model of the ProArt, but this is the 13-inch. And this is a creator laptop, you might guess. It's in the ProArt line with a nano coated anodized something or other matte black finish it looks pretty nice kind of resists fingerprints i it, you know it's got that nice quality look of a, a macbook or a razor blade but that's not the most important thing but it sure helps you like to look at your nice pricey laptop right a uh, pricing actually isn't bad compared to what you get inside for the power but this is a new amd platform as well amd with the hx370 inside the new ai platform and nvidia rtx graphics and all that in this little 13 inch thing and it's an oled display 3k resolution more and we're going to look at it now so yeah we have the ryzen ai9 hx370 so a new naming convention for the platform just to keep us all confused right no more ryzen 7000 8000 that sort of thing uh in theory i guess that would be the 9000 right coming next anyway ai is a thing so this is one with 50 tops of npu computing neural power computing unit inside um probably not the most important things to folks just like that copilot key that's there in the future it may be but it is a faster more efficient platform lots of threads lots of performance without amping up the heat anymore now amd has always been better than intel when it comes to thermals and performance and wattage right more efficient platform and I, sometimes they start to push that thermal envelope and use some more watts to stay competitive in performance not this time so we got that nice nice 28 watt sweet spot don't be confused by the fact this is an hx370 which usually indicates the mobile workstation or gaming laptop nominally speaking it can, of course, boost higher, but it is a 28-watt CPU. And the performance on this is really good. We're talking, yes, it certainly competes with and can exceed an M3 MacBook Pro, uh, the Intel Core Ultra for sure, and also at least matching, if not past surpassing the Snapdragon X Elite. And now Snapdragon X Elite might have some wins on efficiency. This is still an x86 architecture. We'll talk about the battery life and stuff. So they've done a good job here. It is, however, a conventional laptop with an incredible amount of power and an x86 architecture. And that means you will hear the fan. It doesn't get burning hot, but you will hear it if it's working. Uh, so no like Snapdragon level ARM CPU kind of chill, quiet thing going on with this, but it's not egregious either but it is madness to have the kinds of benchmark scores that you're seeing here and the actual performance that goes with that in a laptop of this size and weight it's like 3.04 pounds it's easy crazy carry it anywhere kind of laptop and you've got your choice of NVIDIA RTX 4050 or 4060. We have the 4050. This is not meant to be a gaming laptop. Sure, you can play some games on it if you want. Uh, that's there for creator stuff. So if you're doing video editing, you're doing Blender renders, all the sorts of things like that. And it also increases the AI compute performance of the whole platform. For those of you who are using AI for image generation and other things that people actually are using AI for these days. It has 32 gigs of RAM. With this architecture, it is soldered on board 7,500 megahertz. It allows them to make it faster. So that's, that's okay. I'll give them that. Whether you get the 4050 or the 4060 model, the only difference is going to be that GPU and whether you get a 1 or 2 terabyte M.2 SSD that is upgradable. Uh, so 32 gigs of RAM across the board, which is an ample amount. I think that's good. The OLED display here, they make a big do of it being Pantone certified and all that stuff. And it really is, yes. OLED displays do come in different quality levels and different levels of calibration from the factory. And this is one of the good ones, folks. So it's not just that it's 2880 by 1800, 16 by 10 aspect ratio and all that sort of thing. Color gamut on this, excellent across the board. You're looking at near 100% color gamut, whether you're looking at Adobe RGB, P3, or of course, sRGB, which is the easiest to meet. Color accuracy, excellent on this from the factory. We're testing with the default setting. There's a couple of different color settings you can use. We're going with the default. The color temperature, very good on this black levels. Obviously it's OLED. They say that this is HDR 500 rated for peak brightness. We measure at SDR, so 
we're not going to see that level of peak brightness. You can see the metrics on screen here. It's, it's nice to look at. Even nicer, sure, it's a touch screen covered in Gorilla Glass NBT, but it also supports a pen. Not included in the box, and Asus doesn't mention this a whole lot on their website for what I've seen, but for creator types, that's important. And it's Microsoft Pen Protocol 2.0, so you can use a Surface Pen or you can get one of Asus's pens. And the artist formerly known as Entrig, as I always say about that. And it's decent enough for doing that. I, if you're a... 2D artist who spends their day drawing and thumbnailing and all that sort of thing, you're probably still going to want a Wacom product, Wacom EMR or something like that for the best performance or even an Apple Pencil. I hate to say it, folks, but yes, that's the ultimate in line control and all that sort of thing. But certainly this is very usable for creative types who need to do selections, outlines, rough sketching, all of that sort of thing, and note taking, obviously, too. Being a creator's laptop, we also like to see a good keyboard and trackpad on this. And it is a very tactile keyboard and it's white backlit. No surprise there, not gaming, not perky RGB or something like that, but tactile, nice to type on. 13.3 inch laptop, so you're not talking huge, spacious keyboard, but well done. The trackpad isn't haptic, and that's a shame given the tier that this is in, but you know. It works, it's fine. And it has their dial pad, which at first I didn't really get the point of, but it is pretty handy, like in Adobe apps and stuff like that. You can use the little dial pad to scrub your timeline back and forth and all that sort of thing. So, well, it's there for you. Also, ports are not constrained in the least bit, despite the small size and the amount of CPU and GPU and cooling jammed into this thing. We do have four heat pipes on this and liquid metal, by the way. Uh, you've got HDMI 2.1 FRL on this. You have a USB-A port on the right side, which will derange you right-handed people. And we have two USB-C 4.0 40 gigabit per second ports and a micro SD card sock as well. This is for creators. The charging connector on this is a small rectangular one. Uh, it uses 200 watts, to, so that's why. It's, it's beyond the remit of USB-C if you want to run this thing at full power. It does have Windows Hello with an IR camera and presence detection as well. And how about battery life? So here, this, this is going to be the gotcha because, again, it's x86 architecture. And AMD may be doing a great job with power and efficiency, relatively speaking, for x86 architecture. This is not going to beat the M3 or the Snapdragon platform in 2024 when it comes to battery life. Uh, we're averaging, and granted, it's a 3K OLED display, so that's not exactly going to sip power unless you're looking at a black screen all the time. Uh, we're averaging about eight hours for light, and I'm talking light use, like web browsing and stuff like that, with the brightness set to 200 nits, which is okay, it's passable, but when you compare it to something like the latest Surface laptop running a Snapdragon processor, that one will get like five hours more runtime doing the same thing. So that's where the only hurt is on this. Removing the bottom cover is delightfully easy. A bunch of Torx T6 screws. There's a little rubber cover on this one. Just pull that out and you can unscrew this screw. This is a captive screw that raises the corner up, so it's pretty easy to actually just take the bottom lid off. Isn't that nice? And here are the internal 73 watt hour battery. So you've got a pretty large battery there, which does help with battery life. It could be even worse. Let's put it that way, folks. Stereo drivers here surrounding Harman Kardon certified. Pretty good sound given the size of the laptop, actually. And our four heat pipe painted copper going on here. And again, liquid metal on the CPU. And we have the SSD right here. It's a shorty. Indeed it is. This is a Western Digital SN740 SSD here. The socketed Wi-Fi card is Wi-Fi 7 here, with, and we've got Bluetooth, of course, on board, and that's a MediaTek card. RAM, like I said, is soldered on board, so you won't be upgrading that. So that's the ASUS ProArt PX13. Really a phenomenal achievement, a culmination of years of managing to miniaturize and make processors more efficient than you can get this much horsepower in a convertible 13-inch laptop. Sure, it's not the skinniest, but it's not so different from a 13-inch MacBook Pro when it comes to that either. And you've got the pen support and a gorgeous OLED display. And for those of you who need x86 compatibility, which is still a lot of people out there, well, this ticks the boxes. And when it comes to pricing, aha, I can save that for the end. It's not that bad. It's 1,700 bucks. It's 2,000 if you want to go up to the 4060 with two terabytes instead of the 4050 and one terabyte. But uh, given the premium chassis on this, the performance, the features, everything you get inside, actually, it's a really fair price in 2024 when everything is so inflated. 
I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.